Hi everyone, continuing with our lecture series on legal current affairs, here I am going to discuss the very recent case, the judgment on same-sex marriage or what is also known as the marriage equality case. Now this case, uh, the arguments for this judgment or this case were laid down way back in May and the judgment was reserved. Yesterday, the Honorable Supreme Court with the five judges bench, it decided upon the matter whether same-sex marriages can be permitted under Section 4 of Special Marriage Act. The name of the judgment or the case is Supriyo at the rate Supriya Chakrabarti and another versus Union of India. A very important case wherein the majority of three judges and minority of two judges gave the decision on two important aspects of marriage and adoption. Before moving on to what the court stated in its judgment, I would like to lay some, some light upon the different terms which are being used in context of same-sex couples, cure community. So these are the common terms. Same-sex marriages, it refers to those marriages or between two individuals of the same gender. This was an issue in this very case. Then transgender, this term, it came into picture uh, through the judgment of NALSA versus Union of India, wherein transgender was actually recognized as the third gender existing in India. LGBTQ or the cure, that is a, a short form which is used for capturing, that is an expression which is used to capture various sexual orientations and gender identities of people which they exist, that is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and queer, that community whole is known as LGBTQ community. Union between queer persons, it means that the relationship between the parties where one or both of them have a typical gender identity, that is the same gender, they belong to the same gender or sexual orientation. There were different judgments from time to time on basis of which this same-sex marriage was actually uh, brought into picture. It was challenged the Special Marriage Act Section 4. It was challenged on the ground that since uh, uh, because of these judgments, the effect of these judgments it basically provides a right to the uh, members of this community of members of two uh, belonging to similar same gender to enter into a marital relationship and that should be recognized and this recognition can be given under special marriage act but for that uh, there are certain terms from the, that provision which needs to be deleted or otherwise that section would be considered as unconstitutional or violative of those rights which have been recognized in the Kitana of judgments from starting from NALSA versus Union of India 2014 in which transgender community is entitled to have right to self-identity. This was recognized by the court. Any act of violation of their rights would be tantamount to infringement of their fundamental rights under Article 14, 15 and 21. So they were recognized as a different uh, as, as a different gender and they had this self they had this right to self identity then the case of justice k s puttaswami retired was this union of india 2017 in which it was stated by the honorable supreme court nine judges bench that the constitution protects the rights of a person to exercise their sexual orientation and this is covered under the ambit of right to privacy Navteet Singh Johar and others versus Union of India, the 2018 judgment wherein a partly uh, section 377 of Indian Penal Code was held unconstitutional and it what the effect of that judgment was that it uh, decriminalized all the consensual sex among the adults including homosexual adults. Homosexual means belonging to the same sex or same having the same gender. Arun Kumar and Srija versus Inspector General of Registration and others 2019 judgment 
in which a marriage which was solemnized between a trans woman and a man both being hindu was held to be a valid marriage under section 5 of hindu marriage act and registrar of marriages is bound to register it it was held by the court that such marriage is a valid marriage triple x versus health secretary and another this was the very recent judgment of kerala high court of 2023 in which uh the difference between sex and gender was highlighted so it was said that sex is something which is uh, based upon the sexual organ which a person possesses at the time of his birth, his or her birth but gender is something which is imposed by the society society explains or it is because of the norms of the society that uh, <coughs> that it has been defined that a particular male that a particular person belonging to the male gender or a particular person belonging to the female gender has to act in a certain way has to wear certain clothes has to speak some things or not speak some things so that is something gender has been defined by the society and not that is not something which is natural but sex is determined by the natural organs which you uh, which any person possess at the time of his birth so this difference was highlighted in this judgment on the basis of these judgments as i explained that it was the section 4 of special marriage act was challenged wherein it was held that the two persons can solemnize a marriage and it would amount to a valid marriage if a male has completed the age of 21 years and female the age of 18 years now what was challenged in uh, in this provision was that the usage of the term male and female the using of these terms in the provision in a legal provision would actually uh, impact the rights of the of other persons of other persons of other persons belonging to lgbtq community how they would impact the rights of those uh, those people belonging to those, those community now suppose there are uh, members uh, there is a queer couple queer couple is known as a couple as i discussed before that they belong they have a similar identity sexual identity they belong to like we can consider that they both are females or both are males and they want to enter into a marital union they want their relationship to be given the status of marriage now because of these terms being used in the legislation the male and the female their right to get uh, the right to marry would not be is not is not being recognized by law so that is the reason they challenged section 4 of special marriage act their see this judgment was actually uh, given on two different concepts one is marriage that is the foremost concern of this judgment and other is adoption that becomes uh, all marriage becomes the basis of different concepts adoption succession guardianship and so on first i will discuss on adoption what the court held what was the judgment of the court so court has actually the by majority of 3 is to 2 the court it uh, did not provide the right of adoption to the queer couple but one thing which you must and everyone should actually realize that it is not only about the majority and minority what majority states might be very different from what minority states and at times as we have seen in our very constitutional history that at times the minority opinion which was taken way back in around 5 to 10 years back was actually upheld in a judgment in an upcoming judgment in further judgment as the main crux or as the ratio of that judgment so here we need to understand both the aspects on what minority stated its view and on what aspect majority stated its view moreover it becomes important in the context that very rarely it happens that the chief justice of india his view is in minority so starting with since i have highlighted the importance of the minority opinion i would like to start the decision on the basis on, the, on what on the opinion of the minority what minority stated minority comprised of the uh, of chief justice of india 
Dr. D.Y. Chandrachut and Justice S.K. Call, wherein they stated that unmarried couples, including pure couples, can jointly adopt a child. And the regulation 5, uh, subsection 3, subclause 3 of uh, regulation 5 of CARA regulations, which states that no child shall be given an adoption to a couple unless they have two years of stable marital relationship, except in cases of Pair, uh, relative of step parent adoption is in violation of article 15 because article 15 states that no person everybody knows what article 15 states that no person uh, no person's right shall be violated on certain grounds and those grounds include sex as one or sex or gender as one of the uh, ground uh, on which no uh, discrimination must be made here what CARA or the Central Adoption Regulatory Authority regulations they are stating is that only the persons who are involved in a stable marital relationship only they are entitled to take some or take a particular child in adoption. Now that is something which goes uh, against the principle of adoption because for the purposes of adoption what is important is the welfare of the child and not the marital status of the parties. So that is something uh, that was the basis on which this minority opinion was based. Majority opinion which actually formed the judgment was given by Justice Ravindra Bhatt, Justice Narasimha and Justice Hema Kohli in which they upheld the CARA regulations as constitutional and they stated that the objective of adoption under Juvenile Justice Act is that the state as parents patria has to explore all areas and ensure all benefits reach the children at large in need of stable homes. Now this stability according to the legislation and according to the majority opinion this stability can be provided to a particular child only when there is a stability in the home and for stability to be present in the home there must be a proper marital relationship and marital relationship can exist only between a man and a woman. So this was the basis of this judgment that for step for welfare of a child stability is must and, and because of that stability because of uh, this this ground of stability which can be provided only by a proper marital relationship the CARA regulation which actually in some way discriminates or prohibits uh, the person uh, the, the person belonging to LGBTQ community the couple belonging to LGBTQ community the homosexual couple they cannot adopt so that is something which is upheld which was upheld in this judgment so they cannot adopt any child uh, under the CARA regulations now moving on with the concept of marriage as I stated section 4 section 4 deals with the conditions relating to solemnization of special marriage wherein two persons can marry if at the time of marriage the male is completing the age of 21 years and female has completed the age of 18 years usage of male and female in this legislation has been challenged as being violative as being discriminative of the discriminative to the uh, to the couple who is belonging to lgbtq community or to a homosexual couple now what was the judgment the judgment there are three important points which you need to keep in mind about this judgment is that the Honorable Supreme Court has said that marriage is, it has held that marriage is not a fundamental right. First. Second, same-sex marriage can be allowed only through root of legislature and the judiciary is not empowered to put, act, uh, put words into the act because it would amount to violation of doctrine of separation of power. So, judiciary cannot read something which is not given into the legislation by the legislature because it would infringe the doctrine of separation of powers and it would have a cascading effect. Thirdly, a transgender man and a transgender woman, transgender man and a transgender woman can marry even under personal laws of the country. So here what the court is doing, it has actually recognized heterosexual relationship belong of the uh, members who are belonging to LGBTQ community. 
there cannot be denial of basic goods and services to such couples see that this judgment has been uh, is being criticized by some section of the society it is being praised by some section of the society but from legal point of view we need to understand the majority and the minority opinions of this judgment and you any any person any law student any law any person who is related to law has a right to form his or her own opinion on basis of the judgment given by the honorable supreme court but for that we need to understand what was the ground or what was stated by the majority and what was stated by the minority starting with the minority opinion minority opinion was given by chief justice of india g y chandrachud and justice s k kaul this judgment is given by five judges bench of the supreme court name of all the judges has been specified in the starting slide in the first slide itself and you need to keep in mind the name of the judges who have given this judgment because in times to come this judgment will actually usher a new era a new era wherein uh, different rights would be recognized and different unions would also be recognized by the legislature they may be recognized they may not be recognized but if they are recognized this judgments minority opinion would play a very major role see the first thing uh, the the important part of the minority opinion which both the justices they held was that queer community has right to civil unions of their own choice and this right has been protected under article 191 e the court has been guided by constitutional morality and not social morality these unions are to be recognized as unions to give partnership and love which is one of the basis of marriage marriage is important not only for the purposes of procreation of children for forming the basis of the society it also provides a safety a a, a relationship wherein two there are two people who are present for each other and they provide comfort to each other by their mere presence so this union of people of people even if they belong to same gender they must it must be respected on basis of the very reason for which the marriage was actually solemnized the opinion of chief justice of india t y chandrachud he stated that curious is not an urban elite this this term is not related to something which is very urban very modern it has been in presence since past number of years it can be regardless of one's caste or class or socio economic status so queer community does it, it it does not mean that this community belongs only to the only to social only to the modern uh, class of the society or to the to to very urban uh, states or urban areas but it has been in time since ancient times it has been recognized in our history as well he directed the central government on uh, certain that certain guidelines must be formed and there are certain steps which must be taken by the central government which include that queer community should not be discriminated there should be no discrimination in access to goods and services to members belonging to lgbtq community sensitize public about their rights create hotline for queer community in case they face any discrimination or they are harassed by the different authorities public authorities in that case there must be a certain place wherein they can lodge their complaints create safe houses for such couples ensure intersex children are not in or uh, not forced to undergo operations to change uh, their sexual orientation or for some such similar purposes failure of the state to third thing which uh, third uh, important opinion or the third important point which forms part of his opinion is that or uh, of his judgment is that failure of state to recognize the bouquet of rights flowing from queer relationship amounts to discrimination against this community 
and fourthly reforms in marriage can be brought only by the acts of legislature withdrawal of state from the domain of from from this uh, particular aspect from dominion of uh, personal or uh, private rights it would be it it actually cannot be said that all the intimate activities within the private space they cannot be they cannot they are or they are beyond state's protection because in that way all those vulnerable parties would remain unprotected because a state is not taking any step and they are day and night they are facing violation of their rights and discrimination is being um, imparted against them so there is a reason why there must this must be recognized that state has this right or state must actually has some some power to actually control the intimate activities within the private space of the individuals justice s k kaul who also comprised the minority opinion he stated that he was the only judge on the bench who said that special marriage act is violative of article 14 not even uh, the other judge who formed the minority opinion that is our, uh, that is the cgi of india he also did not state that special marriage act is violative of article 14 only one justice he stated that it is violative of article 14 there are interpreted interpretative limitations in it wherein homosexual unions should be read into it but he but we cannot do it do this because it can have a cascading effect why cascading effect because it would infringe the doctrine of separation of powers he also recognized the need for anti discrimination law in which which should actually address intersectional discrimination which is being faced by these members of this lgbtq community the majority opinion formed by justice ravindra bhat justice narasimha and justice hema kohli in there are different opinions which were given by different judges uh, but the important aspect is that all of them agreed that uh, there there is no right uh, to even form a civil union under article 19 it does not recognize such right moreover and uh, second thing is that there is no unqualified right to marry starting with the opinion of justice ravindra bhat he stated that marriage is a social institution it exists regardless of state terms of the marriage are independent of the state and its sources are external so till the time the society does not the, the implication of his opinion is that till the time the society does not accept uh this this uh, relationship between two individuals of the same gender or same sex as normal till that time this um, even if the state brings some legislation it would not be properly implemented it cannot be implemented properly because the source of marriage is external it it the this this institution it exists regardless of the presence of the state second thing which he said that when law is silent article 19 clause 1 it cannot compel a state to enact a law to facilitate that expression by which he meant that the civil union which uh, was which is being recognized as one of the rights under article 19 by the minority that is something which cannot be done because there is no such uh, uh, right under article 19 which provides this particular uh, right to the person to any person to form a civil union example of limited liability partnership was recognized only after law was enacted court could not have compelled the state to create a law to recognize such an association so here he took the example of limited liability partnership which is kind of a union now this union was not recognized by the court till the time the legislation of 2008 was passed by the legislature similar thing is what he is trying to state he is trying to draw an analogy from that concept he also took an example wherein he said that when you don't have a right to transport you cannot bring or you cannot order construction of roads so the similar analogy was created since they have no right to enter into any such relationship or any such uh, 
यूनियन हाउ कैन समबडी प्रोवाइड अ राइट अंडर आर्टिकल नाइनटीन वन दैट राइट कैन नॉट बी रेड और शुड नॉट बी रेड अंडर आर्टिकल नाइनटीन वन The court could not compel the state to create a law to recognize any such association. It cannot create a legal framework for queer couples, and it is for the legislature to do, as there are several aspects which have to be taken into consideration. Because marriage or union is something which is not to be read into read in vacuum, or it does not exist in vacuum. There are different uh, relationships, different concepts, and different. Uh, actually aspects which are related or which actually affect this this uh, institution justice narsimha he also said he also stated that there is no unqualified right to marry it is a statutory right which flows from a custom and there is no custom existing which actually recognizes the right of uh, of of a queer couple or of a bisexual or a or a homosexual uh, couple to actually enter into a marital relationship so legislature cannot recognize the judiciary cannot recognize it since there is no legislation no legislation because there was no custom on basis of which such right could have been recognized it would not be constitutionally permissible for the judiciary to recognize a right to civil union mirroring a marriage a civil union cannot be equated with the marriage relationship this is what he meant uh, bringing an end to this lecture i would like to conclude with certain points firstly that legal recognition of non heterosexual union is a step towards marriage equality and it must be respected by the society secondly the adoption is a process in which the welfare of the child is of foremost importance so any decision of adoption should be taken into consideration only after taking uh, only after considering this objective thirdly in the current times it is there is a need to examine the viability of such unions or such relationships and provide legality to these which are formed on the basis of love and emotion and not only on very strict conditions fourthly there is it has been observed by the honorable supreme court that marriage is a ever growing and ever changing concept and this has been highlighted through different effected through different legislations which were enacted from time to time like widow remarriage act it recognized the concept of widow remarriage which was not recognized earlier in our customs further coming to the hindu marriage act where in a different uh, grounds of divorce have been provided which was also not recognized by our in by our customary uh, sources or customs hence the government must take into consideration the perspective of the rights of the queer community as well last is that it is high time that step should be taken in consonance with different judgments pronounced from time to time because there are certain areas in which judiciary cannot intervene because of this doctrine of separation of powers and it is time for the legislature to intervene and take the necessary important steps because judiciary can only provide a guideline to the legislature but it is the work of the legislature to legislate on a particular subject matter which is being considered uh, as of utmost importance by a section a major um, a part of the society a part of india itself coming to an end to with this thank you uh, i hope you like my lectures and uh, would like me to, uh, would like me to continue coming up with such lectures from time to time Thank you.